another response to Bella Goes to Hell. Thank you for your previous video. Um, I'm not sure that we are communicating effectively in terms of um, my view, or perhaps your view, of value and suffering. Um, it sounds like you don't you think that I believe that suffering has no value. Um, no, I wouldn't put it that way. I would say that it definitely has value, especially if you're on the receiving end of it. Um, when I'm standing here and somebody is hitting me over the head with something and then it hurts, I'm going to say, I want that to stop. So it has negative value for me. But that can evolve over time. Um, I was raised the Irish way. In other words, physical violence was used as a punishment. My parents, I still cannot conceive of them as having been abusive parents. Um, oftentimes I got so out of control as a kid, I was driving them crazy, they had no other option, or they were at their wits end, they didn't know what to do, so they cracked me over the head with their knuckles. Not in a damaging way, but you know how you sort of flick your finger on the top of somebody's head and it's <laughs> it hurts and it's annoying. But at that moment I probably needed that, because somebody had to sort of teach me that, look, you can't keep on conducting yourself like this in this world. Um, I'd be a bad parent if I let you continue, and I've run out of ideas. I'm only a human being here. I've run out of ideas as to how to correct your behavior. So I'll just say, look, don't do this, and this is what will happen if you do it. Um, and in hindsight, they were probably right. I didn't see it that way at the time. Uh, I was one of those kids where physical violence or physical punishments tended to make me more angry than afraid. So, uh, and I hated being that, feeling that degree of sort of helpless fury. I hated that. So that worked. That worked with me. They probably said, all right, this is something he really doesn't like, and he's not particularly, uh, he's not horrified by it, so it's not as if he thinks that we're brutes, but we're showing him that we're stronger, and we have the ability to impose our will upon him. That he hates, and I think that that's correct. I hated it. I couldn't stand that. Uh, it was a negative experience for me. Um, and, uh, you know, but what if they hadn't done this? What kind of an ungovernable savage would I have grown up to be? Um, I'm already uh, an extremely irritating and rebellious person. Um, almost impossible. But I've learned to live in society and not... You know, I'm not walking into liquor stores with guns or anything like that, demanding the contents of the cash register. Um, you know, and and uh, you know, if you ask me, children have to be taught this. Now, I, I'm not making any excuses for abusive parenting. Definitely not. It's repulsive that that some people do this for their to their kids for fun. And um, I've had this discussion with my wife. She comes from a culture where you never discipline your children physically. Um, it, you just you, there are other ways to do it. It's a, it's more of a carrot than a stick kind of issue, uh, and it actually seems to result in better behaved kids. Actually, so sure, whatever. Um, but anyway, I'm not really sure that we can say categorically what the value that suffering has. It's not a question of whether or not suffering has value. I agree that it does, um, but it's not clear even to the person who's suffering it at the time, whether or not it's good or bad. Um, <clears throat> here's an example that I think a lot of people have gone through in their life. Um, I mentioned in a lot of other videos that in my early 20s I went through a particularly bad depression. Very bad. Now, can you imagine a person in that state <laughs> falling head over heels in love with somebody? Uh, <laughs> not, not a good combination. You're not ready for love, and yet your emotions are so completely messed up that you're incapable of resisting the the lure of uh, uh, things like love or whatever. Um, and that blew up in my face. Okay. And the panic agony and devastation and everything that I felt at the time, I never want to go through ever, 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 ever again. It was simply um, it was panic as opposed to depression. Um, two, two kinds of uns, uh, unsustainable suffering. Depression and panic. Um, but, 
I look back now and I sort of go, what if I'd married this individual? Oh, dear God, was I ever stupid. I was not in any position to sort of understand that this was <laughs> not going to be an ideal uh, resolution or an ideal uh, life path for me. And <laughs> um, the best thing that happened to me, although it <laughs> sure as hell didn't see so, it seemed that way at the time, was that I was disabused of this idea that um, love is going to come along and cure all of my problems. Uh, that was a valuable lesson that I had to learn. Now, I didn't know that at the time. So if somebody had asked me, was this, you know, let's say for about three or four days I was laying on the couch, sort of wallowing in all of this. Let's say about a week afterwards when I'd finally managed to function in society, uh, vaguely, um, <clears throat> somebody had asked me, well, what value do you place on that experience? I would have said, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> it was, it, it's horrific. Uh, look at me now, I'm still a mess. You know, I, I'm just barely on my feet holding my mind together, whatever. Um, <clears throat> and now if somebody had asked me, I would say that, whew, Considering the alternatives or the other scenarios that could have taken place, having the door slammed rudely in my face on that relationship was probably a good thing. I didn't see it at the time, but I learned so many things. First of all, I didn't belong with that individual, and and I really mean that now. Now that I'm, I am married, and I you know that's a very long time ago, but I still remember acutely the the pain that I felt at the time, um, and <clears throat> secondly, um, you'll learn that okay. The love doesn't work like that. It's not a cure-all for all of your problems. <laughs> and you're putting insane pressure on somebody else by saying, please save me from this hell that I'm in. Um, when that person probably, now that I see things, it looks like I see things more clearly, although, again, I don't know. Um, there's any number of possibilities that could have resolved itself. Um, it looks to me as though, considering what could have happened, uh, it's better that things turned out the way they turned out. Um... I'm not saying that I had to learn those lessons, but in hindsight, when I see my life as a whole, that one particular affair, that one particular chapter or whatever you want to call it in my life, uh, turned out generally positive. I learned a few things there, and I learned a few things about myself and, and about, uh, about you know the nature of, of these sorts of situations. And I think a lot of people... I wouldn't be surprised if it's the overwhelming majority of people go through this at some point in their life when they realize what it feels like to have love blow up in your face like this. So I'm not really saying that, I'm, that this is particularly unique or even notable, you know, but a lot of people go through this. Uh, it, in hindsight, it looks as though that resolved itself the way that, you know, in a beneficial way. Uh, in terms of my quality of life overall, I'm kind of glad that things turned out like this. And I'm kind of glad even that I went through this because I learned a lot of things that I wouldn't have otherwise have learned. Uh, such as a little bit of emotional maturity <laughs> and emotional health. <clears throat> but, again, how, how would I, what if somebody had asked me at the time, what's the value of this? Or if somebody had looked at me at that time, you know, as my friends w did at the time, they said, oh my God. God, he's destroyed by this. Yeah, well, you know, that's he's a bad love affair. Really blew up brutally in his face, and you know, oh, thank God that's not me. I feel sorry for him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so yeah, I would look in absolute terms as though that what the the value of that suffering was uniquely negative. Now, I don't know if this is a function of age. I'm 48 now, but. I, you, I tend to see things, <clears throat> and everyone says sort of in this sort of disgusting, angry, or anger-generating way that as you get older, things get put into perspective, and I'm, I don't want to say it that way, but I don't, you know, I, I don't know how, to, how else to put it. Um, the way I would see, it, the way I would put it is, there was, there's a saying out there. I'm not really sure if it's a Zen koan or a Zen proverb, or it could be a one-liner from Nietzsche or something like this. But uh, it goes: all of life, every moment of your life, is a preparation for your death. Um, in other words, you won't really know 
what value all of your experiences had until you're looking death right in the face, till you're about to snuff it. <laughs> um, then you can sort of, I think, judge things more coherently and logically and dispassionately. And from that perspective, I'm quite certain that the harm or the suffering or the agony that I felt when that love affair blew up in my face was probably uh, something that improved me and improved the quality of my life, just as overall, in terms of my life as an entirety, my brush with depression seemed to have improved it, although it was a heck of a lot more than just a, a brush with depression. Um, it was it was it was bad. You know, again, I don't know if it was worse than anybody else's or if it was compared to what other people feel when they're when they're depressed. If it was a mild one, I don't know. All I know is what it did to me, and it was bad. The only good thing about that was when it was to when it was over at the time. And now when I look back, I sort of thought, well, okay, I, there was a whole pile of things that I had to sort of work out in my head. And the depression taught me that I was sort of thinking in an unhealthy way, an unproductive way, um, a futile way, etc. And that, you know, the depression was simply my emotions trying to sort of re-stabilize themselves, re-sort of align themselves in some sort of rational, uh, healthy way. <clears throat> Again, it didn't seem like that at the time. You can say that about just about any suffering that you ever endure. Um... And this is not something that, again, you can say about anybody else. I'm not going to tell somebody who went through the Second World War in Auschwitz <laughs> that what their experience was, even though they think it was bad, that it was actually good. That's <laughs> I, I, I can't say that. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with it was probably a bad thing. Uh, but at the end of the day, I don't know what effect this has on that person's life as a whole. <clears throat> I think that looking at things like mass disasters or <clears throat> things like, say, the Holocaust as just one big phenomenon that happened dehumanizes the people that lived through it. Um, each of the people that went through the terrible sufferings of whatever suffering, whatever terrible episode of suffering you want to um, use as an example in your life, say the Second World War or something, if you just look at it as a whole, you're sort of reducing people to the level of statistics. Look at each person's life that has gone through that. And only then, and once you've, you can look at their life from beginning to end, only then can you actually tell the value of that person's suffering, whether it was positive or negative, whether it made them a better or a worse person, where, whether it damaged them permanently, or whether they... It was uh, a necessary writing of the gyroscope that had to take place. Um, uh, in terms of ethics, I tend to, to sort of say, yes, you should never impose your will on someone else. You should never make somebody else suffer. Um, you know, it, suffering is bad is to be avoided and everything. So what I'm talking about is what's going on in here. What is, what is this, the sum effect of your own suffering on your life as a whole? That is always unclear. It's never quite clear, and the value can change over the years. As I say, uh, two crazy experiences, um, heart shredded in a spectacular flame out of a romance, and <clears throat> a severe depression. Um, just, I hate to say this, but normal things that young people go through. Um, it wasn't bloody normal at the time when your when your feet are at the are being put to the fire here, uh, but you know I look back and I thought okay, and I think okay it's probably better that I was sort of inoculated against this disease called uh, suffering and I learned that okay it's it's not necessarily a bad thing because you have to learn your lesson in life how to manage your own emotions and and that sort of thing and that that was if that was what it took to do that for me, well, I can say now in hindsight that the crazy <clears throat> crazy suffering left marks on me that are generally positive. It sort of said, don't lose your head um, when you're, you know, with when your emotions uh, go crazy. Um, don't sort of, I don't know, m control your emotions. Don't let them control you or your feelings or, or your actions or whatever. 
Uh, <clears throat> that's why a lot of people, I guess, when they get to be, be about my age, they look back on their youth, and even though they had a miserable youth, they still cling to the idea that their, their youth was wonderful. Um, I'm sort of in that state where I sort of think, yeah, it was pretty awful, but God, I'm, I'm glad I went through it. It was kind of, It's kind of neat to look back on. I, would you want to go through it again? No. <laughs> but <clears throat> I'm kind of glad that I did go through it as I drink my... Uh, Hibiscus tea. I drink it out of a wine glass. It makes me feel more sophisticated, but I drink a glass of it every morning. I'm doing it to clear my throat here. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, we don't know um, in the moment what the value is of our sufferings. And it's an interesting phenomenon that sometimes your your sufferings are bad when you feel them, and then they turn into something, I wouldn't say good, but useful at least afterwards and then they, they can go bad again the same event in your memory as you know your memories alter and your the, the value that you place on things changes over time um, but the long and the short of it is we don't it, it's hard to say it's hard to put absolute value on suffering um, it's hard to put absolute value on anything if you ask me but suffering in particular is really elusive it's really a house of mirrors um, again, as a general rule, never make anyone else suffer. Um, but never get categorical about your own suffering. Because uh, you don't really, according to the information in front of you and the fact that life keeps happening at a more or less rapid pace, you're never really sure what the heck is going on and you're never really sure what value you're going to put on things at the end of the day i.e. when you tip over you know when you die um, I don't know it's a uh, it's a funny thing suffering and I'm not really sure that even now my I, I've really worked out a position on it but it's an interesting one <clears throat>